Greetings, I'm Rob Chapa. And I'm the captain. Welcome to the land of G oh, and L. Yes, today we're going to be talking about the G to the L. And we shouldn't forget the D. G to the L to the D. Um, <laughs> G and L. We're talking, of course, of Clarence, George, and Dale. Yes. Um, look, uh, what happened earlier in 2018 was... An opportunity came along, which doesn't happen very often in Anderton's land, uh, but a wonderful brand called G&L, who I think it's fair to say have been fairly underrepresented in the UK for the last 40 odd years. Um, and they said, look, how about in return for you investing in a much, much larger selection of G&L guitars, we sell them to you directly rather than through distribution so that you can get the price down to the customers and you can have it sort of semi-exclusively as well. So semi it's kind of It's in a couple of other places, but not many. And I looked at it and I went, I was like, okay, you know, I've heard of GNL. I don't know a lot about them. We've done a little bit in the past, but I totally know what you mean. It's like it's never really been brilliantly sort of sold in the UK. Um, and then I got talking to a chap called Dave McLaren, who is the son of John McLaren, who bought GNL from oh, Phyllis Fender. I thought you meant who bought McLaren racing no, cars. Nothing to do with that. And in like an hour and a half of him talking to me on the phone about the history of everything and how when he was a kid and playing with Leo Fender and watching him do his stuff, and, blah, and it was like, it was this avalanche of GNL info. And I went, this story's just never been told in the UK. It's Thank like, you. I feel like. I love Fender guitars. Yeah. You've, got to, you've got to talk about Fender at some love point. Love Fender. But you know what? doesn't matter what you say. G&L was Leo's final form. Yeah. I think the thing about G&L is there's a lot of history. People don't really know a lot about the history. Yeah, I agree. And I think the story and the heritage of G&L is much richer than people realise. Yeah. Well, and I didn't realise as well. Uh, uh, you know, although Leo gets all the real credit for the innovation that happened at um, Fender and... You know when they when Music Man were, were working with CLF Research and GNL, George Fullerton has pretty much been by his side since 1948 yep, in they almost were, every project he's done. They were both absolute nutcase tinkering geniuses, weren't yeah. they? And then um, don't forget Dale, who was um, a tail gunner during the Second World War. Yeah. For years and years, and then dropped down behind enemy lines and he was shot down and survived in the middle of France. Got back to uh, the safety of his homeland. Yeah. After having devastated the enemy forces, Dale Hyatt was the sales guy. Yes, so, and a very important ingredient if you want to make a success of a business. Yes, um, and yeah. together that trio of incredible people made something yeah. really special. So, so yeah, I was kind of like, do you know what? I'm going to give this a try. Mm. Let's smuggle them, grease mm. them up, and make them oh, loud. You dirty beast. <laughs> Thank you. 
greeting, so we cannot greet again. Of course, we did the first half of this video about three hours ago in the shop, didn't but we? But I, I do think we should change this G to a C <laughs> and make this Chappers and Lee guitars. C and L guitars, yeah. classic. Woo -hoo! Coming soon. So, to be honest, um, we've just been sat here for like 45 minutes jamming, playing, playing guitar. Getting my new amp sorted out. Yeah. Uh, anyway, look. So let's carry on the kind of GNL story with sort of what we've decided to pick. So we're going to focus on the American GNL stuff for a start. And 2018 is quite a big year for GNL, as it's been the introduction of their Fullerton Standard and Fullerton Deluxe range. And this is a really, really simple range to understand because nothing's really changed uh, between 17 and 18, other than kind of GNL just trying to streamline things a bit. So a year ago and back and beyond if you wanted an american guitar you had a big list of options that you could buy you could choose from colors scratch plates what neck do you want finishes <coughs> hardware blah blah, blah 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 yeah maybe yeah, not geez. a string uh, so you'd choose your basic you know you'd either have an asat or a legacy or whatever you wanted and you'd spec it and you'd have a price and the order would go in and you know would build it and doing anything like that kind of almost has a, almost like a custom shop vibe to it. You know, you're, you're sort of, you can kind of have what you like. And so the price sits at a premium. The Fullerton range is same parts, same builders, same machines, same everything, but it's GNL going, hang on a second, here's an idea. How about we just offer these models with these specs in these colors, then when we build them, we can make them 10 at a time or 20 at a time or whatever it might be. And the price <coughs> comes down quite a lot to, I'll start with the guitar icon. Economies I of scale, which yes. is a great pun for guitars. It is. Trademark that. <laughs> um, so I have uh, a Fullerton Standard Legacy. Okay, so this is the uh, most affordable model in the American GNL range. And I'll get the good bit out of the way first and foremost. These are 999. No, you don't mean nine pounds ninety nine, no. do you? I mean nine hundred and ninety nine English pounds uh, for a full fat made in America guitar. Uh, comes with a really nice gig bag. Comes in a range of uh, slightly kind of funky finishes, so they're all uh, solid finishes. There's no translucent finishes. Um, they'll probably appear on screen now. There are three or four colours. They're all these kind of slightly um, bolder, sparkly kind of finishes. They've got the CLF Research Alnico <coughs> single coil pickups on them. They've got the dual fulcrum trem system, which is the trem system that Leo designed. Uh, it was one of the big uh, design features from the, the original GNL yeah. lineup guitars. I'll tell you a little secret about Do this. It. So dual fulcrum, you've got to remember back in 1980, this was before Fender had started doing the dual fulcrum trem designs. Really, I've, I read Floyd Rose came up with his in 1977. So I guess it's, you know, Leo probably can't claim to be the first. But these guitars, they have a brass insert that goes into the, the wooden body, a hardened steel, um, what would you call these, pivots, I suppose? Ch chassis. The plate is made of hardened steel, and then the arm is made of aluminium. So even then you can see, you know, Leo is very conscious of, of using different alloys to get uh, the sort of tone and stability that he wanted. And of course, at the time, it was a real breakthrough because the, the tuning stability on these types of trem systems are typically much more stable than when you have the six screws going into the body yeah. on like a vintage system. So that's this trem. As I said, these are the CLF 100 um, single coil pickups. These are not the MFD pickups that perhaps GNL are a bit better known for. These are the Alnico single coils that are just designed to be like classic old 50s Fender kind of pickups. Tell them what that fretboard wood is, Lee. So the, the fretboard wood is uh, a CITES friendly brown wood called Caribbean Rosewood, uh, which is not part of the Dalbergia family. It just makes you feel like you're on holiday having a, having a I know. blues play. You know. It's so confusing. So it's called Caribbean Rosewood. That's its common name, but it's not Rosewood, so you're completely fine. You have a, on the standard models, you have an older body, maple neck. Um, it's just, it just sounds great. And tones wise, just this is no pedals. <laughs> Neck pickup. In between. Middle pickup. Back to. Bridge pickup.
I guess you've probably heard that demo a million times as it just sounds like what you think it might sound like. Um, there is an interesting story. I'm going to throw these little GNL nugget bombs in there. The legacy, um, which is effectively, uh, uh, well, actually, no, that this body design, which as you can see is an absolute nod towards the Stratocaster body design that Leo designed 35 years before he came up with, with this. Leo was, within GNL, Leo was never actually interested in kind of, of like just making guitars that looked like Fender guitars. So all the early GNL guitars, like the stuff from 1980 through to sort of 1985 were I'm going to ping up on screen now a guitar called a Skyhawk, a GNL Skyhawk. And you can see that body shape. It looks more like the kind of guitars that, that George and Leo were designing for Music Man, things like the Stingray guitar. And all the original kind of three single coil guitars in the uh, GNL range were on that body shape. And then it was, from what I understand, it was Dale Hyatt who was the sales guy who was saying, look, Leo and George, all the dealers want to buy Strat and Tele shaped guitars. This is at a time when, you know, Fender had, was at its lowest ebb. The CBS deal was going sour. CBS were trying to flog the company. Fender under Bill Schultz were trying to buy it. And, you know, like massive upheaval. And I think the dealers were going, look, we can't get Fenders. They're crappy quality if we can get them or inconsistent quality. What we really want is Leo and George to, to just to save design us. Yeah. some Tellys and Strats. <clears throat> and so that was where the, ASAP shape came out and then short well I say shortly three or four years after that the a lot of the Skyhawk kind of shaped guitars in the GNL catalog began to sort of migrate to a more familiar sort of strati shape um, and uh, <coughs> and then the legacy which is which is the the real kind of like the three single coil kind of proper nod towards um, Fender actually wasn't even released until after Leo died you know I think he, it's really important I think that even the current owners of GNL are going look please 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 don't just go GNL it's just a strap and telly rip off wannabe yeah. the, Leo did not want to look backwards he just wanted to look forwards uh, but I guess there's an element of the commercial you know if dealers wanted it then I guess you know GNL you can understand why they went and built it so anyway look that is 999 and honestly that is a fabulous, fabulous working guitar. Is it as good as anything Fender would make? Well, price-wise, it comes in at about the kind of dough that their special American Strats are. So it's the, these are quite a lot cheaper than the Pro Series. So these would be three or 400 pounds less than, say, a Pro Series American guitar. And a lot of the spec, I guess, on the Pro Series will be similar. The Pro Series will have the, the dual fulcrum <coughs> trem system. And the Pro Series is a nice guitar. But I do think that, I think this is a step up from the special series in the Fender range. Uh, I mean, end of the day, guitars are such a subjective thing. That's big thing. words from a company that sells a lot of Fender. Yeah, I mean, look, I think I said before that, that prior to the deal that we've got with GNL now, where we were buying guitars through distribution and all the guitars were, you know, 15, 20% more expensive something like this might not have looked quite so attractive because yeah. it, it would have been much closer to american pro series guitar and at that money it's quite a head-to-head -head shootout and to be honest with you yeah. you'd probably go with the bigger brand of fender and just go that but at 9.99 uh that is a bucket load of guitar and what does it sound like with a Dane? So I've got a Dane and a Plimsoll on the floor here <coughs> with just the drive side of the Dane. Good. And then with the plimsoll, which is a tighter, higher gain kind of sound. I mean, let's be fair. 
I'm not playing this guitar going, I've never heard anything like it. Because of course I've heard something exactly like it hundreds of times. Uh, but I think it's, it plays great. Um, I like the pickups. Pickups sound good. That's the other thing is where you, you... I've been reading loads about Leo Fender and George Fullerton and uh, I don't think Leo gets enough credit for what a pickup genius he was. Go and get a coffee was. guys because you're good at it. GNL Nugget Bombs. I was really surprised. I, in fact, if anything, if I could sort of say that from reading all the stuff I've read about Leo Fender, if almost the one thing that he was probably more interested in than anything else was pickups. Yeah. And yet you never really think of, you know, you think of pickup manufacturers, you think of Seymour Duncan and, and DiMarzio and all these guys, you know, and you think of all, like, I guess because so many people used to fit aftermarket pickups to their strats to make them better. But I don't know, there's, there's definitely, he's used to think like with crazy. Pickups he's made. Uh, I read a great article last <laughs> night about how they discovered that um, when they were hand winding pickups, because all of the versus machine winding them when you machine wound them all the copper went on so neatly as it was going around that none of the copper kind of overlaid each other uh -huh. and when they used to wind them by hand it was much more haphazard yeah so sort of, and they said that and they could that was they literally worked out that the reason they liked the hand wound uh, sounding ones better was literally because of like the haphazard way that they were wound but i guess it's just not economical on mass-produced guitars to, to try no. and to, to, to hand wire all the pickups but um, that's another that's a classic GNL like advertising slogan from the 80s it was mass mass production is for soda and automobiles which I think, <laughs> which I think was a massive dig at a certain other company well um, um, I've got a guitar as well you have I'm in love with this one ASAP classic yes it's got a beautiful dark looking what wooden back it's semi hollow it, it's a go machine yeah and it's it's nice and light and resonant and as soon as you pick it up you just want to write riffs on it is what you want to do so just before rob goes into it that is an example of something that's not in the fullerton deluxe range so in other words that's not a catalog guitar that's something that you'd have to go i would specifically like the following elements to my guitar and therefore it comes in a little bit more expensive but still good value i think still sort of sub 1500 yeah um but anyway so sorry to interrupt that's Rob. fun Such a nice guitar because great guitar. Isn't it? it feels nice against the yeah. body. It's so light. The neck yeah. is nice and skinny, and I just yeah, what's not yeah. to love about That's that? That's a really really nice guitar. Um, okay, so the other next guitar that I've got is effectively the kind of like the ASAT brother of um, the Legacy. So this is the ASAT Special from uh, the Fullerton Standard, um, and again, is a nine hundred and ninety nine pound American made guitar. Um, Again, I'm just chucking them in, my another GNL nugget bomb. Uh, when this originally came out, would you believe that George and Leo realized that the name Broadcaster, oh. the, the original name that uh, Fender used for the Telecaster that they got told off by, uh, you know, told that Fred Gretsch owned it and had to change the name to the Telecaster, da da da, da. Anyway, they just coincidentally go, 
they, they worked out that the broadcaster was still available to register as a name for a guitar. This is like 1985 or something. So they registered it and this, the, the, the ASAT originally came out as the broadcaster. And Fender apparently just like, mmm, you know, it's like a bit unfair, isn't it? You know, we weren't allowed to call us. And, and I think Leo was just like, fine, like, whatever, I'll change the name. You know, I don't want to fight with Fender or anything like that. So the ASAT, and they, at the time, I don't know why, but I think a lot of the names flying around like Comanche and stuff like that were, were kind of military yeah. based. So ASAT came from the anti-satellite missile defense system. So it's not ASAT or ASHAT as uh, I've heard it pronounced, it's ASAT, um, and does not stand for After Strat, After Telly, which is what other people think it's an acronym for. Or does it? Or does it? Uh, uh, so again, this guitar, same kind of spec really as, as the Legacy, older body, uh, maple neck, uh, comes with a gig bag. We've now got the MFD pickups, which again was another pickup Leo was uh, probably most famous for designing. This is the pickup where the pole pieces are individually uh, adjustable. Huh. So if you've got a guitar, if you've ever owned a guitar and you're just going, you know what, my E string or G string or whatever never sounds quite as loud or one of the strings is overly loud. Uh, the idea on here is that each pole piece is adjustable so that you can get it closer or further away to the string to adjust the volume. Brass saddles on a six piece, uh, six um, saddle bridge. Um, again, probably not going to sound gigantically different to what you think it might sound Sounds like. like a... a little bit warmer, I wonder if it's... You know, for a bridge pickup on a telly, that's not an ice pick kind of sound, no. is it? Little bit of grunt, maybe. These are these are hotter than the. Yeah, um, you can tell. They're hotter than those. Is that aren't tone they? all the way on? Yeah, it is. Well, it's, yeah, it's a thick. You know that the MFD. Yeah, motherfucker. Uh, dense pickups. Yeah, is what it or magnetic for. field design could be either. To be honest with you. And I, and I must admit, not to be confused with, um, is it micro fiber, de micro density micro, fiber yeah. wood that you make crap furniture from? Deoxyribose nucleic acid. <laughs> Probably a bit too much gain there, but there we go. So that <laughs> you it. is a, a Fullerton standard ASAT, also available in uh, some different colours, although again, all solid colours, no translucent colours. That brings us on nicely <laughs> to <laughs> this <laughs> guitar. ASAT classic made in Fullerton. Oh, So that's a deluxe yes. series. So that, that's essentially the one up from here, uh, where you now start to get translucent finishes and lacquered necks, but other than that, and and a few more options on whether you have both single coils or a humbucker here, or you might want a semi uh, like a f hole cut into it. And these are ash bodied as well. The deluxes are ash bodied. That is a sexy looking guitar. <laughs>
Beautiful. Oh. Plays really nicely. So something like that uh, is going to cost you about, I think it's 11 99 which is with a hard case. So for the, the 200 pounds over and above your Fullerton standard, you're getting an ash body, a hard case, and translucent finishes, and a lacquered neck. And six a brass lot. saddles on a classic bridge. Sounds like a yeah. Kenny Wayne Shepherd lyric. Doesn't it? Absolutely. Um, so I'm going Comanche. So this is the Comanche. Uh, you'll immediately notice that the pickups look a bit weird on this. And again, this was a guitar that was originally released in that sort of more uh, traditional GNL shape. Um, was discontinued. And then way after Leo Fender had passed away, uh, somebody went, you know what? You know, you see these pickups appearing on like people find old, uh, I'm trying to remember what the, you know, people find old Comanche uh, GNL guitars and yeah. you see them and they appear in like vintage magazines. Somebody said, you know what, we should bring back those pickups and uh, put them on, a, on, on effectively the, the legacy body. And this is beautiful. So this is again, ash body, gloss, maple neck and fretboard. So anyway, the clever thing on these pickups here is I, from what I can see, they are like an early uh, attempt at making a single coil pickup that is hum cancelling. Um, so it's single coil, it's called a Z coil or a Z coil if you're English, but Z coil probably sounds better. And it is supposedly supposed to uh, defeat the 60 cycle hum. Um, the switch here Does enables, well, we'll find out in a minute. Uh, I don't even know if in the UK, do we even get 60 cycle hum? I thought we got 50 cycle hum. Over we have here. cycles and we, we have, have cycle and hum and rattles and U2 yes. albums. Anyway, here we go. Let's go. <laughs> Okay, that'd be off then. So here is my neck pickups on its own, no pedals. These two. Quite different to a single coil sound, aren't Sounds they? Sounds nice. Very bassy and yeah, chimey, aren't beautiful. they? Beautiful. These two. And with the switch clicked in, sounds like this. We'll have to refer to the manual to find out exactly what this switch is doing other than giving you other sounds. Um, let's see if it does the 60 cycle hum. That's good. There is still some hum there, isn't there, that goes away in yeah, the in-between position. Quickly plug into that and do an AB. Quickly. That's this bridge pickup on a standard single coil guitar with my plimsoll on. Wait, 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 wait. They couldn't hear that because I think there was... Okay, quickly. This is nothing. So it's a, it's a, it's, a, it's some sort of early hum cancelling. It's a primitive hum design. Likey, likey. So that's the Comanche, which again comes in different colours from the Fullerton Deluxe series, uh, also including a hard case, and also totally can't remember what the price is. Uh, it's getting to that stage in the video now where things like this will happen. It's funny, if you, from where I'm sat, as you send, move the guitar around, there's one angle where the, the pole pieces line up and it becomes just regular single coils. <laughs> and then as you turn it back, like it's that. like a, yeah, it's like, um, no, no, it's more like, it's more like, uh, like that. 
it looks like regular single coils. Oh, that's like, cool. Like that. I, and I then, think uh, these are something around about the 1400 mark. I yeah. Think. Anyway. Uh, I've got a Legacy. Woo! And I've downed it to E flat, kind of for like Ingve kind of vibes. <laughs> guitar is yeah. effectively like the the deluxe version of this so right. ash body uh, translucent plays, finishes and lacquered necks it just plays so nicely yeah With, the, with that particular finish, the single ply scratch plate, the, the white blonde and the lacquered neck, it reminds me of like a 50s Mary Kay yeah, it does kind a bit. of vibe. Yeah, I know what you mean. Um, lo loads of different colours in these. Um, and 11.99, which yeah. is, for, again, just a great price for an American-made guitar. Yeah, I mean, it feels like a really high end guitar. Yeah. Yeah, my absolute winning favorite is this. Yep, which is just stunning, and I hope you get more of them in. Well, again, that, and, that's uh, that again is is one where if if you just want to have a, a specific spec to yourself, yeah, then it, you, then you it's, do that. It's that's a, probably what this, you'll see more of in Anderson. This is my absolute of, second runner-up. Yeah, just in terms of feel, I like the way that this yeah. neck feels. So I was it sounds great. I mean, I've not tried that. But I wouldn't mind that. I was like into this yeah yeah, yeah. i could tell because uh, it's like it's it's great value and i love great value you know where, where this type of guitar i'm gonna have to be really really careful not to refer to this as anything other than a legacy may <laughs> but, i but i really like it may i try that command hey command hey absolutely i think it's just how they tried to spell chapman wrong they certainly did didn't they i'm sure they, they got the c in the man bit right <laughs> oh listen to that yeah, it sounds great. Am I in E flat now? Yeah, you are. Well, let's. Sorry, I've got to quickly tune again. Okay. Quickly tune. Thank you. 
Uh, 